a new way to relate, a critical upgrade to human interaction, a new type of social computing, a world-changing project, a new internet. Urbit can be hard to describe because it is many things simultaneously. But in short, it is at least three things. One, a super private computer. Two, an identity. Three, a peer-to-peer -peer network. Or, in one sentence, Urbit is a peer-to-peer -peer internet being built from scratch to be more private, secure, and durable than the current internet. Let's have a look at these three components separately. Component 1. A super private computer. Your Urbit computer is best run locally, with your personal computer functioning as your own server. Self-hosting your data is not only great for privacy, it also solves what Balaji Srinivasan called the data export-import problem. Quote, what if all of your relationships could simply appear automatically in every new social app that emerges for the next hundred years. People hate Facebook, but they stay on it because their friends are on it. Not until we take matters into our own hands, by self-hosting, can we genuinely expect features like a persistent social graph. Their land, their rules. Component 2. An identity. All of our communication channels on the internet today rely on someone else to authenticate our identity. Urbit utilizes a decentralized identity system, where your ID is pseudonymous, meaning you can stay completely anonymous if you choose to not publicly share it. This has some interesting implications. Because all Urbit groups, which you can basically think of as group chats, are unindexed, they spread via word of mouth. So you find the communities you're drawn to, but stay completely oblivious to ones that make you cringe or enraged. No more heated comment sections. People siloing into self-selected communities might seem like we're just worsening the echo chamber. But one perspective is that when we take away the algorithm, we are reviving people's ability to focus and think for themselves. So open-mindedness should increase as a result not decrease. Component 3. A peer-to-peer -peer network. Today, if you want to talk to other people on the internet, you have to go through an intermediary. Servers owned by Google, Facebook, etc. The short-term cost is your data which is stored on those servers. The long-term cost is your time and attention which those corporations use to then sell to advertisers. Because Urbit has a decentralized ID system, it cuts out the middleman and lets you talk directly with people on the network. This has huge benefits for privacy and integrity. Furthermore, Urbit implements a design philosophy called Calm Computing. With no notifications or blinking lights, it's going back to the original conception of the computer as a tool to empower the human, treating its time and attention as something to be respected and not extracted. It strives to answer the question, what if we increased our attention spans? How will Urbit save us? Take a closer look at keywords like feed, influencer, and push notification. What do they all have in common? They describe a master-slave relationship between information producers and you as a consumer. Like a hot girl entering a biker bar, just by logging on, one defaults to a compromised position, having to defend oneself from intruders. Quote-unquote, surfing is now but a relic of our naive retro future. The current web more aptly described as being survived or tricked. Make no mistake about it, there is an information war taking place, and it is happening on the boomer web. The price, your attention. Worst part is, there is no them here. Even curators and producers, devs, influencers, advertisers, 
are themselves addicted to their phones and self-censoring their speech. In the last couple of decades, it has been redefined what it means to be a human. Shorter attention span, less freedom of mind, less proactivity, no dignity. Urbit solves this not by partaking in the information war, but by offering an alternative. Because yeah, you could quit socials, but will you? We're social creatures in need of an alternative without a quote-unquote feed to eat when we want. How to get started. All you really need to get started with Urbit is a planet. A planet is the permanent identity you'll use to navigate the Urbit network. It's a bit like a crypto wallet, but you can think of it more like a digital piece of land that you buy once and own forever. To get hold of a planet, you've got two alternatives. The first is to buy one as an NFT on OpenSea or Urbit.live. The problem is that Ethereum fees are sky high, so I wouldn't recommend it. The other alternative is to ask someone with a star to give one away to you for free or at a discounted price. Since each star is capable of issuing roughly 65,000 unique planets. For this, I can really recommend Justin Murphy's website, imperceptible.computer, where he does exactly this. Second, you'll need to boot up your planet, but this is the easy part. Urbit has made it real simple now, so all you need to do is download their app called Port, which is available on macOS, Linux, and Windows, where you can boot up your planet locally on your computer in less than five minutes. Worth mentioning here is that there are alternatives like Ceramic and Deso, but Urbit has the biggest small group of loyal adherents, at least for now. Mass Exodus when? Urbit is still technically difficult to get on for the average person. So not until my mom can boot up her own planet can we even start to entertain the thought of a mass exodus. Even when the UX is ready, there are still network effects. So probably a dramatic event like a massive password breach, making the old web unusable, will have to happen for the majority to consider moving over. For now though, it's mostly fringe nerds, but it just makes it a more fun experience in my opinion. An ending note. According to Heidegger, we have, since the start of philosophy, been concerned with simple matters. Each epoch allowing for a capped radicality in worldview. And he suggested that only now are we entering the epoch of a whole worldview, along with the rising threat of a complete instrumentalization of our world via tech risking becoming more things than persons. Maybe it is time to choose a ship wisely.